This is a Hummer H2. It is the single most embarrassing vehicle a human being can drive on today's roads. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why. Now, before I get started, I wanted to tell you how I got this Hummer. I've rented it through Turo, which is this service I love that lets you rent other people's cars instead of normal, boring rental cars. Now, Turo has given me a budget to rent cars, and here in Florida, where I've come to shoot some videos, there's an amazing selection of BMWs, Maseratis, Mercedes, Porsches. But I said, I want something more ridiculous. So I got an H2. Now, I rented this H2 thinking it was the most embarrassing vehicle you could drive around on today's roads, and I've spent three days driving it hundreds of miles around Florida, and I've reached one conclusion. I was right. It is the most embarrassing vehicle you can drive around on today's roads. Now, to hear more of my experience driving this hilarious thing throughout Florida for a few days, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com oversteer. Right now, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the H2. The main reason it's so embarrassing is that the Hummer H2 was aimed at people who thought the real Hummer was cool, but they couldn't quite afford one. So it was a real Hummer in styling, sort of, and not in capability. Imagine a car that looks like a Ferrari, but drives like the cart in the airport that carries people to their gates. With that said, I want to clear up one myth about this vehicle. It's a common misconception to say that the H2 was just a Hummer body on a Chevy Tahoe chassis. That's not really true. In fact, the Tahoe was built in Texas, while the H2 was built in Indiana, in AM General's facility right next to the original military Hummer. And its frame is special. The front part comes from the heavy-duty General Motors pickup. The rear is from the Tahoe. But the middle section was built uniquely for this vehicle to give it extra ground clearance for off-roading. So in other words, the H2 is not just a Tahoe with a different body. But that doesn't mean it's not full of hilarity because it is. For example, the real Hummer, the H1, had these giant hoops in front that were part of the chassis and the frame, and they were used when you airdrop the Hummer into combat to tie it to helicopters and to drop it off airplanes. This thing also has the hoops in front, except they're not tied down to anything. They're just for style. They sit there on the hood. There's more hilarity with the wheels. Now, the original H1 had a central tire inflation system, so the tires could be inflated or deflated with the push of a button up front. As a result, it had a little cover over the wheels to hide the tire inflation system so that it didn't get grime or dirt in it. It gave the car kind of a muscular, cool, military look. Now, the H2 didn't have the advanced central tire inflation system. It just had normal wheels and tires like a regular car. But General Motors decided that it would keep the little cover on the wheels purely for style, to cover up the central tire inflation system that it didn't actually have. So there they are, looking cool, finished in chrome. I've also always loved these side steps. Now, General Motors took great care to give this thing more ground clearance and better off-road capabilities than the Tahoe. And then they added these side steps to every H2, which probably steals six inches of that ground clearance right back. And then there's the fact that no vehicle in the world spends so much time reminding you and others what you're driving. Hummer. H2. H2. Hummer. 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 H2. Hummer. 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 Here's another interesting thing about this vehicle. Despite the fact that it's approximately the same size as a regulation soccer goal, it has probably the worst door-to-window ratio of any automobile ever produced. The result is, even though it's huge and massive and enormous, you can't actually see out of it all that well. And it doesn't get any better on the inside. Speaking of visibility, here's another interesting Hummer fact. For some reason, the rear window doesn't go all the way to the sides of the vehicle. In fact, it doesn't even really come close. It stops about a foot short on both sides. It's like the designers looked at the thing and thought, yeah, we could give them more visibility, but nah. So what's the all important thing on the outside of the car that's keeping us from that extra visibility? There's a couple of plastic things that look like vents, but actually they're fake. Which, when you think about it, is a pretty reasonable decision. I mean, do you give them extra visibility so they can see more? Or do you put on fake plastic vents for style? Eh, it's a toss-up, really. 
Another thing I always loved about this truck was its transmission lever. It's the kind of transmission lever that a child would put on a Tonka truck if they brought it to real life. It's big and it's burly and it's muscular and shifting into gear you feel like you're doing something. Except... Another wonderful piece of H2 design is the windshield. Now they decided to give it an upright windshield to match the mean, burly look of the original one and not a sloped windshield like every single other car on the market, which seems fine and normal until you encounter bugs. It's upright design just catches every single bug that comes toward it. I'm driving around in my own personal bug cemetery. One of my favorite hilarious design details from inside the Hummer, aside from the ridiculously cheap looking mid-2000s GM plastic, is the button placement. This entire panel is devoted to three OnStar buttons, just three buttons. And those three buttons are larger than every single stereo button combined. And don't even get me started on why the trailer button is so big and so prominent directly next to the driver. I don't know who laid this thing out, but they did so with approximately the logic of airplane crash debris. With that said, and despite all the hilarious details about the H2, there's one little detail that I happen to love. On the driver's side door panel, next to the switches for the heated seats and the mirrors and the door locks, you can put all of the windows up or down with the push of just one button. Why don't all cars have this feature? It's brilliant. So this thing has some hilarious details, but what about the most important thing, the driving experience? Well, I think that's pretty hilarious too. And here's what I mean. The thing that you instantly realize when you start driving this vehicle is probably unsurprisingly that it is quite large. The visibility is just so weak. All the windows are so narrow to give it kind of this style that they were going for. Now another thing that a lot of people don't realize is that this Hummer doesn't have even the engine from the Chevy Tahoe. It's bigger, it's more powerful. You'd think that would help. It does not. The Hummer does 0 to 60 in something like 10 seconds if you have an early one or like 9.5 if you have a later one. The amount of play in the steering is just unreal. I can go 3-4 inches uh, before it even starts to do anything. It just sort of shakes a little bit when I'm doing that. It doesn't feel pillowy riding around in this car. The ride is actually fairly harsh considering what it is. There is an immense amount of body roll. This thing floats and pitches and rolls and you're like, oh! There are just acres of space in this vehicle, everywhere. Acres of space and acres of cheap General Motors plastic. The other thing that you're constantly thinking about driving this car is how you're perceived. You don't really feel superior to everyone on the road, which was sort of the point of a vehicle that looks like this, because nobody takes you seriously when you're in this car. People look at you and they're like, <laughs> H2, I can't believe it. When I picked this car up at the airport, it said the average lifetime fuel economy was 11.3 miles per gallon. I've done only highway driving in it, and the current average lifetime fuel economy, 11.1 .1 miles per gallon. It went down. There is a wide array of rattles and shakes from virtually everything. It really somehow manages to take some of the worst things about the old H1 and the worst things about a full-size SUV or pickup and really combine them into one without giving you any of the benefits of any vehicle that you might actually want to be driving. So there you go, you've seen all of the H2's crazy details and you've heard about what it's actually like to drive this thing on the road. And now you can know for sure that this is the single most embarrassing vehicle that you can drive today. Although, I suspect you didn't really need me to tell you that.